Good afternoon, everyone. You're very welcome to this webinar. My name is Rosemary Peters Gallagher, and I'm convener of the charity not for profit group with the within the Ulster Society. Um, Gareth McLean from NHS Heart and Stroke is a member and should have been hosting this today, but he's been he's been uh, held up. So he's asked me to, to stand in for him. So um, that's just to explain why I'm here. We're delighted to welcome Emma McCrudden to give us some pointers on how to work well and live well. Um, she's here to talk to us about uh, a free workplace health and wellbeing support programme. So we're always interested to hear anything about anything that's free, I suppose. But I think now that everyone's returning to the office and we're returning to hybrid working or full-time working in the office, I think we've all had a lot to cope with with lockdown and so on. So it'd be great to hear from Emma. So I'm going to, without further ado, pass over to you, Emma. Thank you very much, um, Rosemary. I'm delighted um, to be able to provide this webinar for you through the Ulster Society this afternoon. Um, and basically what I wanted to do was to give you a little bit more information about Work Well, Live Well, which is fully funded through the Public Health Agency. Um, in terms of workplace health and wellbeing, I suppose over the last year and a half, maybe going up into two years now, we have seen from across Northern Ireland, no matter what sector um, individuals are coming from, there certainly is uh, more focus on workplace health and wellbeing and what we can do together. Um, so it, from an employer and employee based approach um, to promote and protect uh, physical and mental wellbeing. And I suppose as Rosemary touched on, it's, um, it's a perfect time because Although we're hopefully kind of coming out of out, out of the pandemic, things will continue to change, and naturally, any change within the workplace will have an impact on workplace health and well-being. Um, so to introduce a wee bit in terms of um, myself and my own background, um, I'm the program manager for Work Well Live Well through Northern Ireland Chest Heart and Stroke, and we deliver the service across four trust areas in Northern Ireland. So that is Belfast, Southern, Northern, and Southeastern. Work Well, Live Well is a regional service um, and we also have our colleagues through Developing Healthy Communities deliver the same service in the Western Trust. So no matter where you're listening from today, um, you will be able to avail of the service if you feel that it might be um, an advantage uh, in terms of support for workplace health um, in your own organisation. What I would also like just to note um, Work Well, Live Well has been operational now. This is our fifth year. Although I would say over the last year, we have seen dramatic change in relation to how we have delivered the service. Work Well, Live Well originally would have been fully face-to-face -face, and obviously we have now changed that um, so that it is reflective in terms of your own workplace setup. So whether that is if your colleagues are working from home, if everyone is in the workplace, or as you can kind of continue that journey uh, and going back to the workplace and um, also looking at that hybrid approach also. Also, what I would encourage um, today that you will see the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. And if you do have any questions as we go through, feel free to type them in there. I'll uh, keep a wee eye in the background and there will also be a session just at the end um, to answer any of those questions that you may have as we go through. So to begin, um, I wanted to suppose just to touch on why should we be investing in workplace health? And this is more so if workplace health and wellbeing is something that you're maybe thinking of or you've maybe dipped your toe in the water um, in relation to providing that support for your staff and for your colleagues. So you can see up there on the screen some of, some of the benefits that I'm sure you will have heard um, of before in terms of the business benefits, but also the, the impact that it can have um, for employees. Um, and we've also been able to kind of see through the impact of Work Well, Live Well, it doesn't just stop in the workplace. Um, and especially now with so many staff working from home and having that hybrid approach, it can also filter through um, into family life as well. So in terms of the benefits, in terms of the workplace, um, investing in workplace health can have a, a great improvement in terms of teamwork and that's something we've definitely seen over the past year in relation to work well live well whenever people were um, encouraged to work from home the biggest kind of impact that was coming through was the sense of um, lack of connection with colleagues 
and through investing in workplace health that is something that collectively could do to bring work uh, colleagues together and kind of build that uh, teamwork and also sense of morale for the business side of thing obviously there um in terms of investing can have a benefit in terms of reduced sickness and also then obviously cost for the workplace and then thinking um directly about the employees so these are some of the examples of um, initiatives that workplaces may run in relation to supporting their staff health and well-being um, and it can have a great improvement in relation to mental health and um, but also their coping strategies in relation to stress um, and, and kind of supporting individuals um, and nudging them towards more of the positive um, coping strategies rather than than the negative ones that are on the screen there and we can collectively um, through different initiatives influence positive change um, and ultimately that can reduce the risk of serious illness um, as we go through um, the life stages. So to begin just a, a bit of a background in relation to Work Well, Live Well, as I mentioned, the Public Health Agency have funded this programme um, for the past five years and Northern Ireland Chest Heart and Stroke has been part of that journey um, for the past five years. So we have done, I suppose, a lot of uh, work with a range of different workplaces and it is all based on evidence. And this is what this model um, shows. So Work Well, Live Well has been designed um, based on the World Health Organization's healthy workplace model. And what the evidence shows is by engaging um, with the model which Work Well, Live Well is based on, you can make a real difference to um, the health and well-being of staff. It's a continual improvement process um, and it will work over four different stages. So the four stages you will see on the screen, which are the four circles around the outside. And it is important um, you will see that each of these overlap and that's where the evidence comes from that we need to be doing and kind of uh, working uh, across each of these four different areas to be able to achieve that impact for staff. So to give you a wee bit of explanation of each of those, I'm going to go to the right hand side, first of all, which is personal health resources. And that is probably what most of you will think of when you think about workplace health and wellbeing programs. So that's very much based on staff lifestyle. And um, so it's thinking about their activity levels and um, their, their nutrition while they're at work. How are they sleeping and is that having an impact in terms of presenteeism whenever they're at work and um, access to health checks and also looking at long term conditions that might be affecting your colleagues in terms of again raising that awareness but also helping to reduce risk. Going over then to the left hand side is the psychosocial work environment and that is very much focused on the mental and emotional well-being of colleagues um, and that can be looking at things in terms of the workplace setup in terms of the the policy side of things but also uh, we focus very much on work-related stress and we bring that across into the health and safety executive management standards for stress um, and the kind of the impact that they that might be having uh, on the individual We'll also look at home related stress and the impact that that could be having um, on staff health and well-being and especially over the past um, year with having to maybe juggle both work and home life in the same place um, certainly has been uh, a struggle for many and uh, it's looking at ways of being able um, to put practical solutions in place to be able to support staff with that. And the final thing that we will look in uh, there is in relation to mental health. Um, so that is very much in terms of trying to reduce the stigma that unfortunately does still exist in relation to mental health and trying to break those barriers down within the workplace setting. Up at the top then we have the physical work environment. So that is very much the environment that your colleagues uh, work in at that time. And as I've mentioned a couple of times now that have may have changed for, for many of you over the past year. So in there, we very much focus on musculoskeletal health. Um, and again, we've seen an increase in that with um, the kind of approach to home working to ensure that staff still have the equipment um, that they require to, to promote mus uh, musculoskeletal health. We'll also look at health and safety. 
Um, and although Work Well, Live Well isn't a health and safety program, it very much focuses on your own existing health and safety policies to ensure that staff are aware of those, but also trying to get away from health and safety being um, one person's responsibility within the organisation, maybe someone who has that as part of their job role or their job title, but actually it's, it's everyone's responsibility in terms of uh, reporting. We've also added in um, elements to this section in relation to, to COVID-19 and ensuring that the workplace is COVID um, secure, but also looking, bringing in the emotional and wellbeing aspect that COVID um, has had over the past year and the impact that that may have had on staff as we return to work or also in that hybrid working um, element. And finally, down at the bottom, you will see enterprise community involvement. And that is basically a different way of saying corporate so social responsibility, which you may be more familiar with as a term. Um, and the reason that that is in there is because there is lots of evidence to show that by bringing colleagues together um, to do something positive and, and giving back to the local community can also have a really positive impact on their own emotional and mental health. So that's kind of the four sections that we will look at in relation to, to what workplace health is. And you'll see in the middle, we very much focus on leadership engagement within the workplace. But what is, I suppose, unique in relation to work well, live well, it is driven by employees. So it's driven by the need that is existing in your own workplace um, and working with that need to um, implement a peer to peer support um, element to, to the programme. And I'd also mentioned it's a continual improvement process. If the last year has taught us anything, is that in a workplace setting, things change all the time. And Work Well, Live Well is, is set up in a way to reflect those changing needs within, within the workplace setting. So whether that's in terms of the structure of the business or for the employees themselves. And we will then basically support you to be able um, to work around that and continual improvement process. So that, I suppose, is a wee bit in terms of the flavour of the, of the evidence. So where Work Well, Live Well is coming from. So what I would like um, to go through with you next is practically um, what Northern Ireland Chest, Heart and Stroke will offer as part of the programme and also developing healthy communities if you're based um, in the West. So initially, the first um, aspect that we will do for all workplaces is to do an employee engagement survey around um, workplace health and wellbeing. And this is hosted online. Um, you can see a screenshot of the program that we use there on the screen. Um, and it can be accessed either through computer, tablet, or by phone. And what I should note, it is completely private and confidential. So we don't capture any personal identifiable information from colleagues. All we are interested in is what they are doing at the minute in relation to the workplace health and wellbeing and what they would like to see to improve. The survey itself will take approximately 15 minutes to complete um, and it is linked basically to, your, to an organisational code that we set up on your behalf. And we aim for at least 50% um, as a response rate. But what I would say to any of the workplaces that I am working with is never use 50% as your target, always go for 100. Um, and especially if you have different, um, a lot of different roles or sites within your organization to ensure that all of those needs are reflected. Um, and that basically ensures that the program is fit for purpose. So it's based on the, on the need of your colleagues. So once that survey then is complete, um, our staff here in Northern Ireland Chest, Heart and Stroke will basically pull together quite a comprehensive report um, for kind of, uh, first of all, the senior management um, side of the organisation. And we will sit down um, online to go through those health and wellbeing needs that are coming out um, for staff. And that helps, I suppose, linking back to the model, that leadership engagement piece. Um, so that staff are aware of, of basically your baseline, where work well, live well is going to go within your own organisation. And we would also then encourage that the senior management share those um, results and priorities with staff as a way of openness across the organisation, 
but it also um, ensures that the staff feel that they're, um, what they have put into the survey is being listened to and will be action kind of going forward. And once we have done that, then um, we will look what we would call health champions within the organization. So health champions themselves do not need to be in any way a health and wellbeing guru themselves. Um, what we would basically look for is that the individuals are enthusiastic and willing basically to be able to support colleagues. Um, and they're really kind of suppose the only requirements that we would look for in terms of, of um, their personality and attitude in relation uh, to driving this forward. And the health champions then would go through a two day course with ourselves. And currently that is um, completely hosted online. Um, and as I suppose we return um, to kind of hybrid working and a bit of face to face, we may, may see this change as we go throughout the year, but we'll kind of keep a tab on what um, is best in relation to um, the pandemic and the restrictions in relation to that. So the first day of the course in relation to the health champions is very much um, bringing health champions together online from different organisations and different sectors. And we feel that is uh, really important because it's a way of also sharing good practice and ideas um, of what maybe other workplaces have done that can be tried and tested and, bring, and brought into your own. And it's also a really good way of opening discussion around workplace health and wellbeing and what's happening across um, businesses within Northern Ireland. And in terms of the content of day one, it very much looks at what is workplace health and wellbeing, because for a lot of these individuals, it might be something completely new. Um, but we also try to kind of build awareness throughout the, the course um, to generate ideas of what um, can practically be done within, within your own workplace setting. The second day then of the course is then hosted directly with health champions from your own organization and that is facilitated then by ourselves. And the aim of that second day is taking those survey results and also the learning that health champions have gained from the first day and turning that into an action plan for one year. Um, and that again, that is based across the four different sections of the World Health Organization's Healthy Workplace Model. Now to date, and I'll never say never, but um, we so far have never had um, health champions kind of pulling ideas into an action plan that is completely out of the window in terms of um, it being real, realistic to fit alongside um, your own current health and wellbeing policies or existing um, human resources policies as well. Um, usually the health champions are very realistic in terms of what can be achieved alongside the kind of normal day-to-day -day working role of employees. And um, once that health and wellbeing action plan is completed, it would then go um, to whatever your normal internal sign off processes are. Um, so again, back up kind of to the leadership in terms of engaging with them, but also ensuring that the leadership teams within your own organisation are invested in what, what is going to come next and are going to support those different initiatives um, that have um, come up as ideas from the health champions. Now, the third section I'm going to go through here um, is very much focused on mental health. And this was a new element that we brought in to work well, live well, um, about a year and a half, two years ago now. And this was directly driven from um, previous businesses that have been through work well, live well, and they uh, wanted to see more support, structured support in relation to mental health. So at that time, we had partnered up with the Equality Commission um, for Northern Ireland to be able to provide um, that structured process that some workplaces were looking for. And um, we now adopt um, as an optional um, part of Work Well, Live Well, that workplaces can also incorporate the mental health charter into their action plan. So it means as you're working through your action plan, you're also um, working off the different charter commitments. 
So if you haven't heard of the Mental Health Charter before, it is a voluntary commitment led by the Equality Commission. And you can also see the different um, charities and public sector organisations along the bottom that also support and have kind of inputted into the Charter. And there are five different commitments that the workplace would be working towards. Now, two of these we would already be doing as part of Work Well, Live Well. Um, and that's kind of um, in terms of the recognition for your own workplace. If it is something that you would like to invest in, you're already you know, um, working towards two, of, two out of the five. So the first charter commitment is very much looking at um, building that awareness around mental health and trying to reduce any kind of stigma that may exist um, within your organization or with um, different employees. So it's very much about that kind of awareness building um, element. And we do that through delivering different mental health support programs for workplaces, for employees. Um, and another element that we've brought in is also them free mental health first aid training um, that is delivered um, through Northern Ireland Chest, Heart and Stroke by a partner organisation, Being Aware NI. And we deliver that free of charge and it can be for the health champions or it can be for other colleagues um, as well. And mental health first aiders are a great resource to have on the ground within the workplace. And if that is promoted correctly um, across the organisation, it's another resource that employees can access. And those individuals are trained then to be able to signpost those individuals on, especially maybe if colleagues don't want to go to their manager or, or to HR for any reason, it's, it's another avenue that they can explore. Um, the second and third um, elements of the mental health charter then more focus on the HR side of the organisation. The first is very much in terms of perhaps if a colleague goes off with a mental health illness um, to ensure that the Equality Commission can give the support um, to ensure that that individual is supported um, back into the workplace. And the reason that is there is unfortunately, if someone goes off with a long-term mental health condition and it, that um, period of work lasts for more than six months, the kind of research shows that um, that individual may not return to the workplace or return to the workplace at all. And that's basically what we're trying to, to prevent in terms of the right support at the right time for those individuals. The third, again, is very much focused on the human resource element and it is more looking at the recruitment um, angle. So again, that the policies and procedures are in there in terms of equality for anyone that has a mental health condition. And number four then, again, as back to us, is very much looking at the signposting element um, so that the support services that are available across Northern Ireland are promoted across the workplace. So again, if an individual wants to um, seek support themselves or again, if they want to, um, if they're aware of those uh, services, they can also use it in their personal life um, as well. And the final then um, is very much kind of looking at your outward facing um, element of your workplace. So who kind of, whoever your customer is or your end user. And the idea is if you work through the charter that those benefits are also, um, will be kind of portrayed um, uh, to those individuals, whoever your end users are. So as I said, that's a, another element to work well, live well, that is there as an option and has worked very well in terms of working hand in hand um, with our own programme. So I've spoke a wee bit about um, the health champions in terms of the training. I haven't really um, touched on yet in terms of their particular role that they would have within the organization. And it is our role in Northern Ireland Chest, Heart and Stroke and developing healthy communities in the West to support health champions, to be able to turn that action plan and ideas that have came from staff and from themselves and to basically bring it to life. Um, and we do that in Northern Ireland Chest, Heart and Stroke by supporting your workplace, by providing different initiatives that you can basically lift and take and adapt to be able to um, roll out across your organisation. 
So to give you a flavour of some of those um, that we have done over the past year, but also to give you an idea of what some other workplaces are, are doing as part of their health and wellbeing plans. Um, you can see some of them up on the screen there. So Northern Ireland Chest Heart and Stroke as part of Work Well, Live Well will also offer um, three uh, either well webinars or well talks whenever we're able to return to the business setting and face to face um, about trying to bring staff together uh, over perhaps lunch and learn sessions um, to give uh, increased awareness but also practical solutions of what they can take away from that webinar or talk and implement into their lifestyle. And we cover basically all of the different lifestyle factors of um, related to chest, heart and stroke illnesses. Um, so anywhere from physical activity, stress, um, mental health, nutrition, sleep, um, alcohol, smoking and so on. We also run what we call then different learning events for health champions. So it's not to say once the health champions have completed that two day initial course that they're just um, left basically to get on with it. And that's certainly not something that we in chest, heart and stroke um, would want to be doing. And to help, I suppose, combat that, we run different learning events structured throughout the year. And we, um, we organise those based on feedback coming from health champions in different workplaces across different sectors to kind of hear from you, well, what are the main um, challenges that you're facing in relation to workplace health and well-being and then we basically go and um, organize an event around that and you can see on the screen um, what we have done over the past year and of course that's naturally changed in relation to years gone by that we have delivered on um, and this year has been very much focused on fatigue um, burnout, um, also mental health, the musculoskeletal health that was that we kind of seen that was coming up. Um, financial well-being was um, kind of rearing its head um, too in terms of a different aspect. So kind of thinking of um, furlough and people kind of managing their money on that reduced um, income. Um, and also kind of the, re the redundancy element too um, of support that staff um, workplaces could offer staff if they find themselves in that um, situation. And we also then try to, I suppose, um, still kind of maintain the fun that should be there in relation to workplace health and wellbeing and bringing staff together and that kind of team building um, events. So we run lots of different challenges um, to try and encourage staff to kind of take part and, and to do something together as a sense of a team. And one that we have just finished is that we had adapted the eight week Couch to 5K program, which I'm sure you all will have heard of. Um, but this one was done with a wee bit of a difference that we were trying to encourage workplaces and colleagues to do, go through that program together. Um, obviously socially distanced, um, but again, trying to bring that um, sense of um, community and, and connection together. And we also then incorporated um, also strengthening exercises into there and that was trying to kind of bring that link across for musculoskeletal health issues that were also coming up throughout the year and then obviously you can also see our mental health first aid training that we also run um, for workplaces that are participating in work well live well and of course in Northern Ireland chest heart and stroke we also have our range of different well and I services that um, workplaces can also avail of. So that is things like well checks for staff. Um, we have our well mind program, which is very much focusing on on mental health. And um, again, everything has been adapted that it can be delivered um, online or remotely. Okay, so you've heard enough, I think, um, from me, I suppose, talking through work well, live well. So what I would like um, to do next is I have a short video of a case study that we had done a couple of years ago um, with a local business that had went through the program. Um, I just want to highlight that this video was filmed before COVID, so you won't see any social distancing place in here. Um, and at the time, Work Well, Live Well was known um, under a different name, so Well Team, um, but the programme itself is very much the same. So I'll let you sit back and enjoy this, first of all. Work 
where we were looking for a structured programme that would address employee wellbeing and the Well Team Initiative seemed that it would do that for us. Northern Ireland Chess Heart and Stroke came out to see us and talked us through what would be involved in, in the programme. It definitely ticked all the boxes of what we were looking for. Well, the next step in the programme was to get all employees to um, take part in an online survey which addressed four particular areas of health and wellbeing at work. Northern Ireland Chess Heart and Stroke provided p Ferries with reports on the results of the surveys and that gave us an indication of the four areas that we needed to work on going forward. We found out that staff wanted more information on the nutrition, physical activity um, and they also wanted access to health checks. We sought volunteers from employees and we had seven staff who volunteered to be health champions. Northern Ireland Chest Heart and Stroke made this really easy for us by offering training and support in simple bite-sized chunks. I attended a two-day course uh, delivered by Northern Ireland Chest Heart and Stroke. Being a health champion means we set up uh, health and wellbeing initiatives within our workplace. The health champions came back with an action plan and they're currently delivering these programmes in the workplace to their colleagues. Within our action plan we had a stress awareness day a healthy heart day, we had health checks for staff, step challenges, weight loss groups, uh, fruit baths was in the office, office yoga and a sleep workshop. Staff have really got behind uh, the health and wellbeing initiative uh, and see, they were really seeing changes you know, within their own lifestyle. The, the likes of the health checks uh, provided me with a lot of information uh, on my health and lifestyle and changes that I could make. Uh, to improve that. Um, they introduced fruit uh, bowls in the office which has contributed to me getting my five a day because I wasn't eating a lot of fruit. Um, the likes of the stress awareness day that we did, uh, it helped me recognise when I'm getting stressed and provided me with tips on how to relieve the stress and relax more and then the steps challenge was very good too so it was because it got me out walking more and maybe think about my exercise and I've now taken up cycling and swimming as well. At the end of year two we plan to reissue the staff survey as a monitoring tool and the results of that will help inform us of what future health initiatives we might implement at Pendle Ferries. I'm delighted that we decided to work with Northern Ireland Chess Heart and Stroke and the Well Team programme really helped p and Ferries to implement our employee health and wellbeing initiative. So there's been a real improvement in staff wellbeing, staff morale, teamwork. It really has been good for, for p and Ferries. Okay, folks, so hopefully that gives you, uh, I suppose, a bit of an insight and reflection to how Work Well, Live Well can be implemented with it within the business um, as a bit of an example from um, a local employer. So um, I'm coming to the end um, of the webinar um, at the minute, but if you're um, sitting there and you would like further information, um, you can see um, QR codes that you can um, scan on your phone um, as you're listening. Or we also have the different web addresses um, at the bottom too that you can take a note of. Um, for the first step in relation to registering your interest in Work Well, Live Well, um, there will be an online form at both of those, um, either through ourselves or developing healthy communities for the West. And then a member of our team will get in touch with you basically to run through the program in terms of next steps and answer any questions that you may have that are particularly kind of more focused on your on your own um, organization. And we'll basically then um, kind of start the program um, from there. And that brings me to the end. So I would like to open up if anybody does have any questions um, that they may have, um, feel free to pop them in the Q&A. Um, and I'm happy to answer those. Um, or if you use that web link beforehand, um, that will bring you to our registration form. And I'm more than happy to organise a chat um, separately outside this call um, if you prefer that way too. 
Emma, could I possibly ask you, um, while we're waiting for Q&As to come in, um, you're working in conjunction with a partner. So if an organisation has um, offices in both areas, yeah. how does that work? Do you act for all of them or is it a shared piece? So how it would work, so for example, if an organisation has offices in Belfast but also in um, Derry, we will go wherever the head office is based. And that's basically which organ which partner organization. So whether Northern Ireland Chest Heart and Stroke or developing healthy communities will lead on that. And could I ask one one further one? The, this all starts with the survey. Um, okay. is the survey tailored towards the organization or is it just a general finding out survey? Yeah. So it's a general finding out survey. So it has been designed based on the WHO model so the questions have kind of been tailored in relation to that mm -hmm. um, and it's very much kind of more generic so we're not looking at the you know the current health and well-being policies that an organization might have that very much comes next whenever we get to the health champion stage. Can I just thank you on behalf of, of the charity not-for-profit not group um, I think everyone has found this very very useful it's given us a lot to think about uh, and, you know, as people start to return to the office, things are going to be difficult. So, um, or have the potential to be difficult. So yeah. I think we'd like to try and ease it, the path as much as possible. So thank you. My pleasure. And thank you for um, inviting me, but also to all the attendees for, for listening or, you know, catching up on the recording afterwards. And Rosemary, as you've just okay. kind of touched on, um, for me, workplace health and wellbeing is always important, but as especially as we're going through a period of change, if there's anything that we can do um, to kind of make that journey a wee bit easier and um, to support the physical and mental wellbeing of staff, um, you know, we'll have ultimately great benefit for them, but also, you know, the whole organisation working together. I think we'll finish by just thanking you again, Emma, and uh, no doubt we'll all be in touch privately. <laughs> No problem. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.